we're going to be talking about several fairly automatic behaviors that serve multiple functions at once. The main function of which is to resist the internalization of controls and standards and values that most people want folks of good character to adopt. But some of the behaviors that we're going to be talking about not only obstruct the internalization of values and standards of conduct, but they also serve as good weapons of impression management and manipulation uh, as well. So they have a multifunctional purpose. Okay, we're going to talk about the first responsibility avoidance and manipulation tactic, and that is rationalization. Now, I uh, should say from the outset that we are not talking about here the defense mechanism of rationalization that some people use to assuage inner feelings of guilt, but rather we are talking about a tactic of excuse making that is much more for the purpose of getting others to see your point of view, explaining away your behavior in a convincing enough way that somebody who wants to confront you about that behavior will be swayed and think that you are totally and completely justified in doing it. So it's basically a manipulation tactic and it's also an active resistance tactic. In other words, when the person engages in this behavior, they are saying that they hear you with respect to the behavior that they want you to internalize, but they're saying they're going to have no part of it. Which is why when any of these, any of these tactics that we're going to talk about, whenever you see any of them at work, you know for sure that the behavior is going to happen again. For example, when an abusive individual is called out for the shove or for the punch or for the uh, uh, throwing against the wall that they did of their spouse or their partner, when they're called on on that and then they come up with whatever the excuse is, you never have anything good to say about me. You pushed me to the edge. You were on my case all day. You were at me, you were at me, you were at me, you were at me. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. Okay? Whatever the excuse is, and that, by the way, that tactic there is combining several tactics, from planning the victim to vilifying the the victim to a lot of other tactics. So many times that's one thing you need to keep in mind is that sometimes you get a barrage of the t these tactics all packaged up together, you know. Uh, but when the person is making that excuse, especially if they do it in a way that it's almost viable and it sounds very convincing, what they're really saying is, I hear you with respect to the issue, I'm not buying it, I'm not accepting it, and I'm trying to justify that what I did was okay, even though it's not okay. And simply taking, taking the, uh, the example of this aggressive behavior, whether it be a push or a shove or a throw against the wall, what's the excuse for it? When it comes to a wrongful behavior, there is no excuse. There simply is none. But the disturbed character is going to make the case. Okay? And they're going to make the case, as I said, for the multifunctional purpose of trying to still look good and getting you to concede the point, manipulating you into buying the reason, whatever it is, so that you get off their case. So that's the multifunctional role of the tactic. So long as I make that kind of excuse, so long as I attempt to justify what I know to be... First of all, most neurotics ask themselves the question, well, don't they see what they're doing? Don't they understand what they're doing? Don't they understand the wrongfulness? Of course they do. 
Think about it for a minute. How could they not know that most people regard it as wrong if they're offering an excuse for it? What's the, what's the, what's the purpose of the excuse? Why do they need one? If, if they believe truly that it's okay and that anybody else would believe it's okay, who needs the excuse? This is, such a, this is a, a frequent judgment error that trips people up in dealing with disturbed character. And not just lay people, therapists too. They're notorious for this. When you're hearing an excuse, they have to know not only that you believe it's wrong, but they have to know that they have violated a standard. That's why they're making the excuse. And so they're doing their very level best to put, shine the best light on it, to justify it, when they know there's no justification for it. And so important to remember, as with any other tactic that we're going to talk about, when they're doing that, they are telling you two things definitely. One, they understand what you want them to internalize. Two, they're not about to do it. They are not accepting in their heart the need for change, which is why you know you can, you can take it to the bank. It's going to happen again. They're going to do it again. So, you know, people in problem relationships, they get all these clues. They get all these clues. There are all these tactics to recognize. What, what, what they need to be more aware of is what the tactics are, how to, uh, how to label them and how to interpret them and what meaning to, to give to them. But whenever you see these tactics at work, you're being told the story. You're being told that things are not going to change and they may get worse. 